Hello and welcome to this edition of Creighton in the Community. My name is Joyce Bunger and I'll be your host. Have you ever considered getting a doctorate degree? Did you think doctorate degrees were only for like the brainiacs and the scientists? Well at Creighton University you can get a doctorate degree to become a stronger leader. Creighton University recently began a program. It's a doctor in education and leadership. And here to tell us about is Dr. Isabel Cherney. Dr. Cherney, before we talk about the program, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got to this place. Thank you, Joyce, and good morning. Um, I'm an associate dean right now at the, uh, in the graduate school and university college. And actually, I was called. I was lucky, and uh, two years ago, I got a call from uh, Dr. Gail Jensen, the dean of the graduate school, and said, would you like to be an interim director for this new program, exciting new program? And I was quite, not quite sure what I was getting into, but um, how could I say no to such a, a wonderful opportunity? So that's how I got connected into the EDD um, program. What, what prompted Creighton to begin an EDD? In 2008, Father Schlegel had, in one of his many speeches, was, was telling the community that he really wanted to expand graduate education, and in particular, online education, and to match this with the strengths of the Jesuit Catholic intellectual tradition that we have here at Creighton. And so he um, created a, a grad school education task force. They looked at multiple uh, possibilities and came up with this fantastic new program in leadership because they thought that that was really um, taking the Jesuit values and um, putting it into a practice um, program and using our strengths as a complex but small in, um, college. Can you tell me more about that, about how the, the Jesuit overlay, why that positions Creighton so well to offer a leadership degree? Like, what are some of those values that are the same values of the Jesuits, the same as a leader, for instance? Mm -hmm. the, the Jesuit values are, are all about social justice, and um, we want to educate leaders about social justice and how they can be agent of social change, for example. The Jesuits are all about leadership, really, and in, in, in ethics um, in leadership. And so that's the type of uh, overlap that we see uh, completely naturally. And then we have the opportunity to have, we, because we have so many different colleges and schools, to really make this an interdisciplinary program in leadership that will take the Jesuit values and the complexity of Creighton and match that to the leadership program. I want to go back and take some separate steps of what you just said. First of all, the doctorate in education in leadership. What other things were considered and why leadership? Were there, is there something that there was a niche that needed to be filled? There's definitely a niche to be filled. Um, leadership, the problems we have now in society are very complex and um, we need really ethical leaders, um, agents of social change, and so it made uh, it made it almost a, a, a symbiosis to create this type of, of program. I don't know all the other programs that they were thinking of at, mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. first, but that's the one that, that really emerged uh, very early on. And so the task force really created all kinds of focus groups. The focus groups absolutely loved that idea. And we created several boards. The boards all um, also thought this was an excellent idea, particularly with, with the strengths that Creighton has to offer. And because we created it as an interdisciplinary program and a general program, that means that we solve problems or the, the leaders will solve general global problems that we face today, it has to be interdisciplinary because you need to know something about budgeting as well as legal issues as well as organizational issues that, that arise. And by having students with backgrounds from business, education, and healthcare, to, to name just a few, you create this incredible um, knowledge for everyone. So if I'm a business, if I have a business background and in my class cohort, I have individuals that work in healthcare or education, K through 12 or higher education, nonprofit organizations and so forth. When they share what they do uh, to solve a particular problem, I can learn so much from doing that because I will likely create or you know encounter some other problem that I have to to uh, solve that might be similar or I can I can learn about strategies and and certainly a lot of the legal issues that are attached to that so in your program you have 
faculty members from the law school and from mm -hmm. probably what nursing school or the health sciences schools and they all come all right now the program is online so I guess I'm curious how do you have these discussions mm -hmm. when you're online how does that happen the program is mostly online in eight-week modules and the discussions is we have discussion boards um, on the online platform and so we create we we ask students to read certain uh, papers, certain articles, certain uh, journal articles that, that they have to search for themselves, and then um, ask very uh, specific questions about general issues that they are facing or they have read about. And then the students have to write uh, on the discussion board and then also respond to other students' discussions. And so that creates really a very dynamic way of um, talking to each other. They also tend to um, Skype each other when, when necessary, or we use a synchronous from time to time um, model. Now we're getting more and more international students, so this might become oh a little my, more. international students. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are going to, um, for the next two cohorts, we are having individuals that are right now in South Korea, Iraq, Italy, Ethiopia, and Vietnam. And so this becomes a little more tricky to get a, a common time to talk face to face if you want. But we also have um, an on-campus orientation, and August 15th, actually, we will have roughly 70 students coming to campus to meet and to create this, this really strong learning community that we want of our scholars so that they bond and uh, create uh, a really strong community to go forward. And that will allow them to also share more of their experiences and, um, and create a, a, net, a strong network. Now, have you had a graduate class yet? No. No. We have one that started in January, uh -huh. and I believe you're going to interview one of the, one of the students yes. from that from that class. And we're starting two cohorts um, right now. The demand is so big that we actually have to. Uh, create when you say new cohort, cohorts. how many people are in a cohort? Huh. Um, ideally, we would like them to be not too big, but right now um, we have two classes of 28, wow. and so. It, uh, they're, they're kind of big. So we will have to look forward and uh, make some decisions about uh, growth. Are they coming to Creighton's program, do you believe, of course your leadership, but do you believe they are coming because it's Jesuit, because it's online, because it's leadership? All of the above. What we hear very strongly is um, they, they love the Jesuit values that come with it. That's really unique to our program. Harvard University created one the same time we did, but theirs is not inter as dis interdisciplinary, and that's a big draw for, for this group of students. So, and Creighton's reputation is, a, is also a great draw for, for this program. The fact that it's online allows all these wonderful already leaders in the community to actually work with while they're working and uh, uh, create this new scholarship that they're that they're developing, so it's it's really convenient for them as well as um, interesting and, and challenging. I think this is something I maybe could do. And when we come back, we will visit with Dr. Cherney's students. Welcome to Creighton University. I know that a lot of you have traveled uh, great distances to be here, and I think we've got uh, students from several states and three or four countries here with us uh, today. I went back to graduate school at the age of 44. Anybody younger than 44 here? Anybody older than 44? Uh, this is my kind of crowd. <laughs> full-time working people, but also full-time students. And again, this will be a challenging program, but I can guarantee you it's going to be an outstanding program, one that you'll excel in, and I'm quite excited about this program. This place, this university, changed my life. Changed my life. And it's changed the lives of all of our students. Even though you're graduate students, even though you're doctoral students, it'll change your life as well, because this university is driven by this wonderful mission of being Jesuit and Catholic. And you'll see that in the experience you have here. So I am delighted you're here. Congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you in the years ahead, especially at commencement when I shake your hand to say, congratulations, Dr. You aren't any less part of the university just because you're going to spend less physical time here. 
uh, we very much consider you to be part of us and we uh, really value the talents that you bring uh, to this university. We have a very, very, very impressive group of faculty who are here to help you, to mentor you, to teach you. Uh, we won't see you as often, but please think of yourself as being part of, of the university. Take advantage of what we have to offer, and we will be very, very proud to call you Creighton graduates. Hello, I'm Robert Connolly. I live in Vietnam. This program works out very well for me. Uh, I was looking for a good doctorate program that I could do while living in Vietnam, and uh, an online program is the only way I can do that, but Creighton is the only university I would trust with that. This is a great way for me to be able to do exactly what I want to be doing. I want to be teaching, and I can teach leadership and management courses with this. I want to be consulting. I also want to work with education projects and develop new programs in Vietnam. I'm Mary Kay Vanderplu from Stafford, Virginia. I chose Creighton because their philosophies uh, are very, par they parallel my philosophies of uh, strong leadership, uh, strategic planning, a uh, spiritual growth as part of my leadership journey. And I was very impressed with their online program because it fits the needs and to my very busy schedule as a school administrator and a mother of two small children. So I was very impressed with how they want to meet my needs, therefore I can succeed in their program. I really hope that this program will contribute to my professional life in terms of being more of an effective leader, working not only on uh, helping individuals become better leaders themselves, but also able to lead uh, large groups and, and be effective and be able to communicate effectively to uh, build goals and carry out those goals. Hello, my name is uh, Jeffrey Matty, and I am from Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, which is about 40 miles north of Pittsburgh. I chose Creighton because of uh, Creighton's academic reputation. Uh, I uh, am fortunate in my job as a principal that I've uh, associated with a lot of schools, and I know what Creighton has to offer, uh, and also because of the opportunity to take the uh, program online. I think this program offers myself an opportunity to study leadership uh, with a good faculty, but also with uh, individuals from uh, all different facets, for example, healthcare, edu higher education, and also business. And that really appeals to me that uh, I can integrate with them and it will help me in my future endeavors as a leader. Okay. I'm Jane Shelley and I am from Griswold, Iowa. I chose Creighton because, first of all, the Creighton name. I know that Creighton um, has a reputation of being an excellent educator and a community that really builds leaders, and so that's why I chose Creighton. I have always wanted to obtain my doctorate in educational leadership. I feel that um, we really need educators who are leaders, and so as soon as I saw this program was available and it was online, and also, I love the aspect that it's in a cohort, so you definitely develop relationships even though you're in an online setting. My name is Karen Cook, and I'm from Princeton, New Jersey. I, I chose this program in, in particular because it's interdisciplinary, and having focused solely on counseling and therapy and psychology for so many years, this is kind of an out-of-the-box program and, and out-of-the-box thinking, and I, I really feel like as a lifelong learner, it's going to um, encourage me to work better with people from different professions. My name is Charles Thomas, and I'm from Flint, Michigan. The ED program in leadership, I think, the reason I chose this program, because coming from Flint, Michigan, there aren't a lot of people who understand the whole philosophy of leadership and why it's important. And being that person who kind of pursues excellence for excellence sake, more as a demonstration of human potential, the ED program will afford me the opportunity to go out to inner city kids, corporate America, and engage in these leadership conversations to take us as a society from where we are now to where we should be or where I think that we could get to if we just focus on the whole leadership aspect. I'm Melinda Rustin, and I'm from Fargo, North Dakota. I chose Creighton because the minute that I started looking into it, it was always a positive experience from my admissions rep calling me about every other day to talk about Creighton and talk about the program to um, the director of admissions, to everybody when all the communication. And it really enforced in me that it was a positive experience here.
I am not somebody who goes by gut reactions, and I've been looking at programs for quite a while, and I always left the universities having more questions and feeling uncertain about it. And as soon as I started looking into Creighton, it was that, and it was just a gut reaction. I knew immediately, and I applied that day, and it just worked out that way. I am here with Dr. Gail Jensen. She is the Dean of the Graduate School and, I neglected to mention, University College. Tell us a little bit, first of all, about the relationship between the Graduate School and University College at Creighton. Yeah. Well, we recently put the two. I have administrative responsibilities for both the Graduate School and University College. And um, that, that's a very good fit because a lot of, of graduate students are adults and we're doing more online delivery of education to adults who are working. So it's a, it's a very good uh, fit at, at this point in time for the university. Made great sense. Why was a doctorate of education, or why is a doctorate of education relative in today's environment? Well, I'd focus on two things, on leadership and on the interdisciplinary nature of leadership. Uh, take my position. I have to work across many groups, many disciplines, and today's problems are complex and they require the working together of many uh, professionals, many disciplines to solve these complex problems. So leaders have to know how to bring people to the table to work together in a more collaborative environment. And that leadership skill is challenging. We're used to working in our own silo vertically mm -hmm. uh, with our own resources and that's no longer the case uh, in any organization whether you're healthcare or education or business you have to be more efficient, cost-effective and deliver quality. So it, it's really something that we're all struggling with uh, in, in society. So when I'm sure you were at the table when the decision was made to go with a doctor of education and leadership, can you share with us what was going on in those discussions? Well, we had we brought different disciplines together to talk about leadership, and we we came to this conclusion that the challenge of working across disciplines as a leader is a a current and future challenge. So how can we prepare the best leaders to do that? And if I can go on, yes. the, the, the fit here with, with being at Creighton as a Jesuit Catholic school is leaders that are successful in this venue are leaders who really bring out the best in every, everybody, all their employees, that leadership is a part of everyone. And they lead from the center. So they're able to develop the leadership abilities and skill and recognize that in everyone in that collaborative fashion. And that's what makes organizations successful. And the Jesuits are, are very good at that, that leadership skill requires a great self-knowledge, a critical self-reflective knowledge. And that's really a fundamental of, of, of our program and fundamental to the Jesuit mission uh, of the discernment, critical self-reflection. So that is what makes Creighton's Doctor of Education program different than other Doctorate of Education programs in leadership? I, I, I think so. I mean, I think you heard it from both Dr. Cherney and, and uh, uh, Father Nitsky that, that this is really uh, a piece of knowing yourself and then knowing how to bring out uh, respect and bring out the best in others. You, you, you heard Father talk about that, and that's personnel issues are, are a challenge for everyone. Mm -hmm. So how do you make people do their best work? And then when you're working cross cross disciplines, how do you bring people together to solve the problem, to focus on what needs to be done versus focus on your own resources or how do I get better at doing this? So, When I entered the business world in the middle 70s, it still was very much a um, the leaders at the top and you do what the leaders say. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the people that were, the young people we're educating today will be better leaders because they aren't I think people have more flexibility in their reasoning today and what they're able to do. Do you have you seen a change in 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 how leadership operates? At that, all? That, that that's a tough one. I mean, I I I, I have a strong belief that that uh, men and women bring different attributes yes, uh -huh. to the table, and I think it's the organizations that can use both men and women at the decision-making table. Uh, are, are more successful because we bring different 
views. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I think the, the temperament of the risk-taking, decision-making, collaborative spirit, all of that is very necessary. But I go back again to the, to the moral compass of respect for human dignity, mm -hmm. which is how you lead. You have to respect everyone. And if you believe that everyone is a leader, uh, in their own way and has those capabilities and has those capabilities then you can get the best work from people towards towards that greater greater goal mm -hmm. and and that's what the the Jesuits are are good at in a very implicit way in, mm -hmm. in in some ways and then and then take that goal and and translate it to what society needs we need a more just world in business mm -hmm. education healthcare mm -hmm. so if we can put out leaders that can do that we, we can be transformative, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think we can really make a difference. Well, let me ask you this question. Can you teach somebody to be a leader? Is it, are some people just, well, I'll do it in two, we'll do it in two ways. One, can you, can you teach people to be a leader? And if so, what are the things that you teach? Yeah, yeah I, I can also answer that right. because my belief is that without learning, there is no teaching. So you have to focus on the learning. So the, the leadership development is about the, the student learning, the, the adult learning. So the transformative change that occurs in the learner is really the success or the evidence of the teaching. Hmm. It's not about what I download. And you heard, you heard Tom talk about that. Tom said that he, he, the learning community, and the other thing that online delivery brings, which is so critical, is now you have a community of learners faculty and adult students working together, sharing their own experience and creating knowledge. Knowledge is not just something I give to you. I taught a course in leadership and ethics and the, the practical problems that these students brought to the discussion were incredible. And then we took what we were reading, what we were studying, the, the key ideas and theories, and used that to problem solve through these these real world problems. And then you, he, you heard him say, I got inside, I tried this. His knowledge is constantly changing as he interacts with that community. And we're all changing. I learned something. Mm -hmm. So that's the excitement of, of that kind of, of teaching and learning environment. I think I get it. I think what you're saying is. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I think what I'm hearing you saying. Sign right up, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we're going to take a class in this, 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 and this, and at the end, you will be get a certificate for being a leader. It's through the whole conversation, yes. the evolution. Yes, I mean it, it Very goes. Very interesting. It goes back to the importance of us, what drives assessment uh -huh. is is our program outcomes. Who that? It's formation. It's who the learner becomes. And and again, there is a Jesuit piece in that. Your professional continued development of who you become as a leader is really the. At the, at the fundamental importance. That's the common denominator. Right, and then you, you take that with someone like Dr. Cherney, who's an incredible leader. She's already demonstrated her ability to do that kind of interdisciplinary work in running the honors program for several years. Yeah. So she comes to the table with that, that rich experience, even though she might not say, I, I can do this. It, it just comes out of her. So what are some of the, at the, at the end of, of the program, what are some of the characteristics, attributes, strengths that you would hope the graduates would have or would have, have mastered? I, I would think, one, that they would have a, a deepened respect uh, in a very um, uh, intentional way for the people they work with and the people they're, they're leading or facilitating you know, the, the vision of, of what that organization needs to do. And they do that through their own uh, self-knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. putting their ego aside, but mm -hmm. also keeping their, their eye on vision. What's the next point? But they would also, that vision would be very connected to a justice issue of what does society need to be a more just world, uh, uh, vulnerable groups. How do we translate mission into our work? At whatever level we, we need to do that, mm -hmm. uh, whether we're working in nonprofit or uh, working in communities or working on individuals. So I think it's the, the collection of, of leadership uh, at that individual level as well as what society needs. Why do you think there are so many educators, uh, principals, and so forth in your program? Well, we're, we're seeing a actually a, a, uh, evolution. Uh, uh, they're not all that, uh, this second, third cohort 
uh, are different. Re yes, a very mix of uh, people from nonprofits, some people in, in Catholic education, mm -hmm. uh, people in business, uh, people in other kinds of, of um, uh, uh, training, professional training, where they want to really have more challenge in their, in their positions. But they do connect. You, you see this connection to what a Jesuit education means, which is very heartening, I think, uh, to, to all of us. Wow, what a program. It's exciting for us. I mean, I, I, I told Isabel, I said, I love teaching this class. It's great, it's great fun. Uh, I've learned a lot, and I'll continue to learn. Oh, marvelous. Thank you. This concludes today's program, Learning is a Journey. If you're interested in pursuing a doctorate in education in leadership at Creighton University, give us a call. On behalf of all of us at Creighton University, thanks for watching.